Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Social Studies class. This is your teacher, Mr. Clark. Now for today's lesson, we are going to be doing things a little bit different. We are going to be assisting those students that will be sitting their CSEC exit exams in another few weeks or so. So we will be looking at some past paper questions and also providing possible answers. Alright? Now, in the interest of time, we will not be doing the entire paper in this video, right? So you can look out for subsequent videos where we will look on other questions, right? So for today's lesson, we will be looking at paper 2 from um, the 2017 past paper. But again, we will not be doing the entire paper. We will be doing questions 1 and 2. Right, so we're talking about questions that usually fall under individual interaction. Right, so we're talking about the family and groups and institutions. So those are the questions that we will focus on for today's lesson. And in other lessons, we will look at other questions. Now, before we begin, just a gentle reminder to all the viewers. Please remember to continue liking the videos. Please continue to share them with your friends and your families. And for those persons that are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe right now. And at the end of the video, please leave us a comment and let us know what you think about today's lesson. Alright? Now just a few tips on how to answer short answer questions, right? Before we begin to actually look at the questions. Tip number one. Ensure that you understand the questions clearly. Ensure that you understand the question clearly. Right? So before you attempt to answer the question, please ensure that you understand fully what the question is asking. The second tip, use simple terms to answer your questions. Right? You have some students that like to use big words and nothing is wrong with that. But for exam purposes, Please use simple terms that are easy to understand. Alright? The third tip, keep your sentences short and precise. Don't beat around the bush. Just try and keep your sentences short. When you make your sentences too long, then you begin to lose the essence of what you're trying to say. Right? It becomes ambiguous. So please try and keep your sentences short and precise, to the point. Alright, now let us get straight into the paper. The first question, define the term alimony. This is a pretty simple and straightforward question that requires a, a very simple and straightforward answer. So the answer, alimony is payment made to a spouse after a divorce. Full stop. And you move on. Right? So that question values two marks. And that answer should give you your two marks. Question two. Domestic violence may lead to divorce. State two other problems that may lead to the breakdown in a marriage. Right? Now, I have done other videos on marriage. So you can refer to them for your answers. But the answers that I have here, and I have given you four answers, right? So even though the question asks for two, for the purpose of this video, I have given you four that you may choose from. Two problems, and please remember students, answer your questions in complete sentences. Two problems that may lead to divorce are proof of adultery. That's A, B, unreasonable behavior by one partner c desertion for two years or more and d separation for two years right so even though i have four answers here please remember that the question only asks for two and you should provide only two answers all right number three and by the way before i go any further my questions are structured a little bit different in terms of numbering. Alright, so please don't be confused. Alright, describe two types of families in the Caribbean. 
right now by now you should know um at least three or four different types of families um talking about the extended family the nuclear family the single parent family the joint family the sibling household right so you can choose from any any one of those and describe two types of families right so in your descriptions please ensure that your description is comprehensive so that you get maximum marks all right my descriptions they are simple and straightforward and you can add a little bit more right to yours the nuclear family consists of a mother father and their child or children number two the extended family is usually a large family which consists of many generations right so like i said before you can make your descriptions a little bit more comprehensive right because you can mention for example that the extended family is also known as the multi-generational family and you may also even um, give an example of persons that um, are in this type of family to, just to ensure that your description is, is a little bit more comprehensive than mine right so you can mention that the extended family can usually consist of uncles and aunts and cousins and so on and so forth number three the single parent family consists of one parent and his or her child or children right so you can also add that you have two different types of single parent family you have the single parent male in which the father is the only parent and the single parent female in which the mother is the only parent right now please remember that i am only giving you three answers because we're doing what we would consider to be revision right because the and the question only asks for two describe two types of families in the caribbean all right so we're moving on number four suggest three strategies that an association for the protection of families may use to reduce the incidence of domestic violence in the family now this is these are the, the the questions that students don't normally like because this is actually a two-part questions question sorry and we will get to the other part in a in a short while now as for the strategies the first strategy recommend that the person affected gets help from a trained counselor right now you're getting two marks for each strategy because the entire question values six marks so that should be enough for two marks the first one so recommend that the person affected gets help from a trained counselor at this point you don't really need to explain why because the second part of the question will require you to justify your answers right the second strategy implement coaching seminars which focus on training boys on how to become good men number three recommend stiffer and more consistent penalties for perpetrators right so those are the strategies that i have listed you can go ahead and um write your own strategies right you can come up with your own strategies um so for b now explain why each strategy is likely to be successful so as i mentioned before most students don't like this this question because it is a two-part question and they usually ask you to justify your answers right so that so this um the b section the b part basically requires you to justify your answers now the justification the just justifications that i have written are having trained counselors talk to the person or persons that are affected is likely to be successful because the counselor is trained specifically to deal with these types of problems and is likely to provide amicable solutions to the problem right so that's the first justification the second justification in most reported cases of domestic violence it is often men that abuse women if boys are taught to respect women and to be good role models 
it is very likely that domestic violence may be reduced or even eradicated among families. Right? So those are two um, justifications so far. And then the third one, if stiffer penalties are administered to the perpetrators of domestic violence in a more consistent way, potential offenders would be more reluctant to carry out acts of domestic violence. Harsh penalties combined with consistency is known to be a deterrent to undesirable behaviors. Right, so that is how I have justified my three strategies. Moving on. Question 5. State two characteristics of interest groups. Right, at this point I, I, I must say to you that all the questions that I've answered so far um, from number 1 to 4B would really be one question on the CXE paper. Alright, so number 5 here is where number 2 would begin on the CXE paper. Alright, state two characteristics of interest groups. Number one, interest groups have a specific common interest. Number two, they all have the desire to influence change through consistent pressure. Right, so interest groups are really what we refer to as pressure, group, group, pressure groups and they usually advocate for a specific cause. Alright, so those are two possible answers. Number six, state two factors that may create the need for interest groups in society. The first answer that, I, that I've given here, consistent abuse of power by political representatives. Right, so if political representatives continue to abuse their power, that, um, that might give rise to an interest group to, to be formed in order to represent or to speak on behalf of the people. Right, the second answer, the need for sensitization on health-related matters. Now, I have chosen health-related matters based on the, the fact that we are now in a pandemic and there is the need for sensitization of the public as it relates to vaccination especially. Right? So, interest groups usually ca campaign for certain reasons. Right? So, the need for sensitization on, on health-related matters is one such issue that may give rise to interest groups. Alright, so we move on to number seven. Give two reasons why governments usually respond to the needs, views, and requests of citizens. Right, so basically this question is asking, why do government respond to the needs of citizens or the views and the requests of citizens? Two simple answers. To avoid the possibility of becoming unpopular among the citizens in election time. That is one possible answer. Another answer, to avoid violating the rights and freedoms of the citizens, but instead promote transparency and accountability. Right, because if citizens um, are making certain requests, right, if citizens are giving certain views, then more than likely these views or requests or, or needs are based on the rights that the citizens have, right? So if the government fails to respond to them, they are basically violating the rights of the citizens. And, and as a government, you don't want to do that, right? And government also, to go back to the first answer, government usually respond to the needs or the, the, the request of the citizens because they want them to vote for them when election time comes, right? I have given you a third option, which is to avoid civil unrest, right? So the government um, would not want to, to get on the wrong side of the citizen, and then the citizens start to have demonstrations and all sorts of chaos within the country. So that's a third possible reason why the government would respond to the needs, views, and requests of the citizens. Alright, so we move on to number 8. Number 8 says, Suggest three strategies that a Ministry of Agriculture may use to assist a community group to 
to engage in food production. And I'm just going to go ahead and read the, the question that comes under the, the follow-up question. Explain why each strategy suggested is likely to be successful. So as I said before, it's, this is another two-part questions. Question, sorry. And students usually shy away from these questions. But um, there is really no need for you to shy away from them. They are a part of the exam and they must be answered. Right, so the, the strategies that I've come up with, the Ministry of Agriculture may give the group financial grants to offset the cost of production. That's the first strategy. The second strategy, host workshops to provide professional guidance on production. The third strategy, establish links with both local and international markets. All right, so those are my strategies. You can come up with your own and you can even post your strategies in the comment section and let us know what you think. All right, so the justifications for these strategies. Number one, giving financial assistance on the producers would motivate the young producers, right? As this is usually one of the main issues that prevents producers from starting out. So most pro young producers, potential producers, they usually first of all wonder where the money is going to come from to really start out, right? So that is one thing that usually discourage them. So what I'm saying here is that if they are given financial grants, they will be encouraged, they will be motivated to get into food production. All right, the second justification Workshops are likely to give assurance and confidence to potential producers because they will develop a knowledge of how to be effective in achieving success in food production. Alright, so that's the justification for having workshops. And the third justification, most persons who think about going into food production usually worry about finding a market for their products. If the Ministry of Agriculture can establish marketing links for them, this assurance will inspire and motivate them to engage in, in the production of goods. All right, so basically those are the three ways in which um, I have justified my answers, my strategies that I gave before. Right, so that is where we're going to stop for today. Hope that today's session was beneficial to someone. And I will see you in the next class. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Social Studies class. This is your teacher, Mr. Clark. No